Hello and welcome to Community Chats. I'm your host, Ali Hammer, and today we're interviewing Corin Malay, the Head of Social Responsible Banking at Teachers Mutual Bank. Corin, it's so great to have you with us today to talk about sustainability. Can you start by telling us a little bit about your sustainability journey so far? Thanks, Ali, and thanks for having me on. Well, look, we were started in the 1960s by a bunch of teachers who got together who wanted a financial organisation that looked after their needs, looked after their community, and not about profit. And that was the formation of a credit union, like a cooperative. And for 50 years, that's been our business model about looking after members ethically and sustainably. And, you know, we're with the original profit for purpose approach, and now this is becoming quite fashionable in the world. Today, we're a $9 billion bank that serves essential workers. So teachers, firefighters, nurses, university professors, um, we look after their families and, and their, their money. And these members, you know, they contribute a lot to society. So we think they deserve a bank that has good impact. And we think that good people deserve a good bank. Um, when we became a bank in 2012 from a mutual, from, from a credit union, this was the trigger for a big change in our ethical business practices. We set more than 80 targets. We set a target to be one of the world's most ethical companies, which we met within two years. And that's a high bar that we set every year. Um, it's a 55 year journey. And I think even now we're realizing that there's a world of opportunity to come in social responsibility as it's so mainstream these days. Well, I'm really impressed by your commitment to sustainability as I think it's such an important part of every business and their core goals. And Corin, the term social responsible banking is thrown around a lot, but what does social responsible banking actually mean? Yeah, it's a wide topic and there's, there's many different variations. Look, I think globally, I mean, big banks around the world have put about $4 trillion into the fossil fuel industry in the last five years of the Paris Agreement. So there's an example of what it isn't, is investing in fossil fuels. I mean, can a bank be good? Uh, well, we think so. But to do that, it's really got to be built in at the very beginning. It's got to be central to an organization's purpose and strategy and leadership. It can't just be a few niche projects, a few community projects, or a bit of recycling. It's got to be about your purpose and your practices, not really your projects. And for a bank, it's about your money. What does your money do on the balance sheet, the assets and liabilities? What's it being used for for good? And so for us, it's about having it being built in and, and not bolted on. I mean, I can list 100 things we're doing in social responsibility. There's a lot going on, but to name a couple of things, we put 7% of our profits back into the community. Uh, that's seven times global average and 12 to 18 times that of the big four. Uh, we invest our money responsibly under strict rules. Every product we sell has social responsibility built in as standard. And I think we are also a net zero bank in terms of our direct emissions and we have solar panels on our roofs. But ultimately, others decide whether you're social responsible or not. This is the uh, consumers, uh, not for profits, standards bodies, you know, even Royal Commissions can do that. But at the test of time is really the independence third party verification. So the proof comes from an external party. And if they can measure that for you, then you're measuring up to being a social responsible bank. Well, absolutely. When I was researching for this, I did see that TMB has been voted one of the world's most ethical businesses for eight years in a row. So the data doesn't lie. It definitely makes sense that because you're owned by members that you do want to make sure that you're doing the best for them and give them the best future. So what's the impact of social responsible banking to your members and customers? And what does this actually mean for those future generations? Yeah, well, I think these days, even if you don't know what it is, people expect their companies to operate ethically. And for us, it's a standard, not an aspiration. And it's especially true in the case of banking because we're looking after people's money. It's their future, it's their livelihood and you know, their dreams of the future. And if you're a member owned bank, you can guarantee that we're not have a conflict of interest between shareholders and our members, because the members are the shareholders. So our profit goes back to the members, to the community, to the products. And we can reassure our members that we're always acting uh, for people and for community and for society. And I think um, our commitment to our members is that when you join us, you can match your values to your bank, literally at no cost. It comes at no extra cost when you're part of us and we look after people's money. I think these days people are realizing that there is an ethical side to, to, to money and finance. Certainly consumers are aware in terms of shopping for solar panels or keep cups or organic food. And that ethical trend is broadening into finance. People are asking questions. What is my super food? What is my bank food money? And we're starting to see 
uh, a more sophisticated consumer understand that their finance organization can have an impact in the world, perhaps more so than those other, other, other projects. And that that is the start of ethical consumerism in finance, which is an exciting time. Personally, I think it's so amazing that a bank is putting sustainability and social responsibility at the forefront of your business goals. So finally, Corin, what's next? Where are you guys heading? I mean, you've done so much already. So where, where to next? Well, I think we're just the beginning of our journey uh, to be a, a leading social responsible bank. These days, these issues are mainstream. Lots of businesses are looking at ESG or climate change or ethical investments. So it's, it's great. There's an explosion of interest in this. And I think our point is that we want to keep uh, approving that running a bank on values is profitable. And if you think there's a trade-off between profit and values, then I think you're not doing it right. And more so these days, we think socially responsible banking is a competitive advantage and it drives financial sustainability. I mean, it, it is a competitive sport. You're not just doing this stuff, you're doing it to win and you've got to constantly hone your natural advantage to be competitive advantage. And beyond that, the long-term sustainability of, of banking or mutuals in Australia is such that uh, there's consolidation, there's challenger banks, there's fintechs, there's ongoing pressures on costs, which is why it's so important that we match our socially responsible banking approach with the digital first approach, because we need to move with the times. And we're evolving our business to be a digital first uh, a platform and modernizing operations to be part of that, because we think that the future is both digital and ethical, that's the bank of the future, and that's where we want to be. Corrin, it's been such a pleasure speaking to you today. Thank you so much for coming on the show. And if anyone has any questions at all, please pop them in the comments below and we'll get back to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ali.